In this video, we'll demonstrate how to find the project's overview page, go to project home pages, and create a new project. Let's go to the project's module. Like all module overview pages, the project's overview shows stats, such as the number of active and inactive projects, as well as a project checkup area, where you can see projects with missing information. You can select a project from the drop-down to go directly to it, but first let's click the list of active projects. This displays a card view of all of your projects. To see a more compact list, click List. The card view provides a little more information. And the ability to scan to see who the internal contacts are for each function, whether any projects have open items, and how much has been invoiced against the contract total. There is also a map of the project location and the current weather conditions. To go to a project's homepage, simply click the card. This view provides all of the information about your project. Let's get oriented. In the upper left, you see the same information found on the cards, including the primary project photo. On the right, there is a list of items you can track on the project and whether any are coming due or overdue. In the lower area, there are three tabs. The Quick Links tab displays areas of the project that are added to favorites. Click the button in the upper right to manage your favorites. Favorites can also be accessed on the Settings page, and we'll show that when we go into Settings. Below Favorites is a list of all the links to various areas of the project, including the project library, the project team, contract administration, procurement, and much more. Throughout this course, we'll go into all of these areas in detail. The General Information tab shows more details about the project, the active status and currency and all the dates related to project bidding and scheduling. There is also the Classifications area, and just like in Contact Management, there are specific classifications related to projects. This project has the lead source classification. To add a new attribute, click Import and select from the available classifications. Here, there are only two classification types available for projects, the lead source and structure type. You can create new classifications for any project attribute you want to be able to filter and report on, so maybe you want to include the green certification agency, or whether it's a union or government certified job. We'll explain how to create classifications on the last video in this lesson, on settings that affect projects. The third tab on Project Home shows linked files, and this is something we'll talk about throughout the lessons. You can upload project-related files such as photos, drawings, specs, vendor invoices, and much more, to many areas of the project. These files then become available for linking throughout the project. You can download or view any linked file from this list. For example, when you create an RFI, you can link to specific drawing files, or, when you create a punch list item, you can link to a specific project photo. Linking to files means you have all project files at your fingertips without having to deal with duplicate or out-of-date copies. The list of files you see here shows only the files that have been linked at the project level. You can show files linked to specific record types, such as change orders, by clicking Link Existing and selecting all other records. When you complete a project, click download all to pull all files down for archiving. That will include all files associated with the project except for photos. You can download all photos in a second step which we'll demonstrate when we get to the documentation lesson. Then, you have the option to delete the files from the completed project to conserve storage space in your system. Alternately, you can go to the Quick Links tab and click All Project Files to see a list of all files linked to any record within that project. Now that you're getting comfortable with the project homepage, let's create a project so we can talk about features in more detail. From the Project List page, the Actions button lets you add a project manually or add a project by converting it from a lead. We'll talk about the second option in the lesson on leads, so let's add a project manually. The Add Project Wizard guides you through the steps to set up a project and you can add a project's prime contract at the same time you set up the project if you want to. 
In this lesson, we'll complete steps 1 through 8 of the project wizard, which leads to the point where we'll create the project contract. In the next lesson, we'll continue on with setting up the prime contract. In step 1 of the wizard, select the owner organization and the primary owner contact person. If you've already set them up in contact management, you can select an existing customer and contact. If you haven't, you can select new customer and set them up right here in the wizard. However, you don't want to end up with duplicate companies in contact management, so be sure to check your list of companies before adding a new one. In step 2, fill in details about the project and any field with a red asterisk is required. Projects are not auto-numbered, so choose a numbering convention that all team members use when setting up projects. Project numbers can be any alphanumeric string of 25 characters or less, and you can change a project's number after setting it if you need to. In this example, the convention is the two-digit year followed by a three-digit number. Since projects represent jobs that have already been awarded, you are not required to enter a bid due date. So let's leave those blank. You can select a sales contact, bid contact, and project manager for the project. In order to be available in the sales contact list, you need to configure an employee with that setting in the HR module and we'll demonstrate that when we talk about HR in a later lesson. The bid contact and project manager lists include all employees of your company from contact management. The specify contacts for projects option lets you set up the project directory with individual contacts from each company. With this checkbox selected, your project directory can show multiple contacts per company, as you see here. If I leave this checkbox cleared, the project directory shows just one entry per company, with no contact persons. Note that this option cannot be changed once you complete this step of the wizard. The project address is filled in based on the customer's billing address as entered in contact management. You can change it to use the shipping address or enter a different job site address. In step 3, choose classifications. Select only one value for all of these. Notice that you can't select cost code classifications at the project level because each project will have multiple cost codes. We'll talk all about that in a few moments. Step 4, upload project drawings. If you have the drawings in a folder, you can simply drag them to the file area to upload them. Later, we'll talk more about drawings and specs in the leads lesson, so for now, just upload one drawing here so you can see the process. Step 5 displays the list of drawing files you've selected. You can rename them here, assign a discipline, and select whether to burst multi-page drawings into individual files. This is really convenient if the design team has delivered all drawings in a single PDF file. In step 6, add specification files. This step and step 7 work exactly the same as the drawings upload steps, except that you don't have the bursting feature for specifications. In step 8, add project photos. You can add as many photos as you need to here, and in a moment we'll select which photo will be the project homepage photo. You can also set up photo albums and organize photos however you need to, and you can make photos available to external collaborators in the team link portal. You'll see how to do these things in the lesson on documentation. We will stop after step 8, because we will not set up a prime contract for this project yet. Now that the project is set up, you can use all non-financial project features. Before the finance features become available, there must be an approved prime contract. We'll discuss prime contracts in the next lesson. Here's the new project. Let's go to photos. We want the photo we added to appear as the main project photo, so let's click it and select the main project photo checkbox. Now it is visible on the project homepage, and notice that the area is a square, so it's typical to use a square photo or crop a photo so it isn't scrunched up. In this video, you learned how to view your existing projects, and we started setting up a new project.